Hey guys, it's Ed Antipenese again from Zamani Enterprise Tutors. And I hope you have a lovely, you're having a lovely day. Um, so if you've been following on our tutorial videos, you'll notice that um, we've been majorly dealing with um, Java programs, okay? And today we're going to be doing something quite um, similar to what we've been doing, but in a bit different. Uh, today we're going to be developing what is being called the Snake Eyes application, all right? So if you take a good look at my uh, the screen now, you'd see a dice that has just two. Uh, I don't know if you look at it very well, you might be able to see the snake eyes well. Oh, good, or fine. How this is supposed to work is uh, a, the user is going to be rolling these dice, okay? Um, in our last uh, tutorial video about dice, where the user had to press R to roll the dice, okay? And then I said um, you could also further develop the program to ensure presses R, okay? So we're going to ensure that in this particular application. And then um, we're going to, you know, until the user rolls, um, um, one and one and then the program is going to end so at that uh, we're also going to make it available for the user to be able to quit because in an attempt to roll one and one you can roll it 20 times 30 times and then the user might not be able to go through all those times okay so uh, apart from that I think another thing we're going to have to look at probably in another tutorial video is to be able to set uh, snake eyes person will be willing the user will be willing to you know roll so we say and then we we'll, we will also be able to look at it if the user wants it to be an automatic role. Probably the user. So without further ado, let's jump into pro the code. All right. Um, so what else have I done uh, before this? I created a new Java class file called snakeeyes.java. All right. And please do not forget that all these link, all these um, codes will be available in my GitHub repository where you can go take the code, copy and paste, and tweak as much as you like. Okay. So since we're going to be at least accepting an input from the user, which happens to be the key R, um, when the user wants to, you know, roll the dice, so we're going to say, which I'm going to need a scanner object for that. Um, so I'm going to say scanner, not security exception number, scanner, a scanner, and a is equal to new scanner. Okay, new scanner system dot in. And then the semicolon okay. Uh, another thing we're going to need is that we're going to be needing the character a character for impulse. Okay, so this would be what is going to save uh, whatever the user enters, be it the R key or any other key. And another thing we're going to be needing is that we're going to be needing a random object. Okay, so random random is equals to new random. Okay, so this will be responsible for um, generating a random um um, digit from one to six okay another thing we're going to be needing is two integer values variables now that are going to represent um the two dice or the two die like i just learned today that um, one die is one is actually called die the plural is die so when you're talking about the two of them use dice uh all right now a simple print statement to just tell the user what application it is so we're going to call this Snake eyes dice game or oh, snake eyes uh, game. Okay, no snake eyes dice game. So we'll stop there. Uh, then we'll just print uh, just print a line or just okay. Now that being said, the next thing we want to do is to have a do while loop. Uh, if you're paying attention, most of our programs now has been dealing with dual loop. Okay, so I'll just remove this import statement is not needed. So our dual loop, so do okay. We'll get to the while condition soon. Let's just have it there. That's semicolon. Okay, so we want to tell the user system dot out print line enter r to roll your dice okay and then we're going to take input so we're going to say input is equals to a scanner dot next dot car at zero okay that will give us the first index now we want to check if the input so if input it is that it entered um, r okay then we can start whatever we want to do. First of all, we have to get a random value for both die one and die two. 
so that one is equals to one plus if you don't know what this is i'm going to put a link in my uh, i'm going to put a link below and then it's going to give you uh, it's going to lead you to when we use um, the guess the guess game and then i really explain how the random class works but then for a brief explanation what this is going to do is that this is going to give us a value from one through six okay so this one adds it so any random value from one through six the same thing is going to be applicable to our die two so i'll just copy and paste this so copy and paste and then change this to die two okay so we want to show the user what he wrote okay so we're going to say you wrote okay something like this and then I'm just going to put the value of die one here. So die one plus the comma. Put the value of uh, die two. Okay, and then plus, and then this. All right. Um. So what next I'm going to do is I'm just going to give it a space again. And then I forgot something here. We're going to be needing another integer value that we'll be able to calculate how many number of rows so number of rows is able to tell us how many times the user had to roll to get um, snake eye okay so row number of rows plus plus all right so another thing we're going to be needing row dice or zero to quit okay so in case the user wants to quit enter zero so we can they'll say here else if okay else if um input okay is equals to car zero but it's going to break out of the entire loop okay so i'm just going to have the break statement there but if not i want the user to keep entering until the user finally enters um r as to row so i'm going to say wrong input Please re-enter, okay? E N T E R, and then I'm just going to yes, just another space in between. Okay, so I'm going to tell the user to re-enter. Now another thing we're going to want to do is the condition now would be say while input, okay, while input not equals to R, so continue. While input, so this now caters for the fact that um, the user must input R. So continue if so. This loop should always continue if um, the input is not R. And then another thing we're going to be needing is um, I'm going to be needing our all. So I'll just come here and um, do this one, two. Oh, sorry, that didn't go in. Okay, so I'll just get that again. Oh, uh, one, two. Don't know why she's not there. Then let me make it somewhere here where I can see. And then get my own screen keyboard again. Okay, so one, two. All right. Take this out the way back up. So I want this to continue if the if the cutting if the dice has not rolled the snake eye yet, and if the input is not R. So that caters for the first one. If the input is not R, now the second thing we're going to be using is we're going to have this and say if die one not equals to one or That two not equals to one. Now, what this is going to do is uh, it is going to cater for the fact that we must roll a snake eye or the input must be R, okay, for this loop to continue. Okay, now the next thing we're going to want to do is we're going to want to display probably uh, we want to display how long it took the user. To get a snake eye, and then if the user was, if the user did quit, 
okay we want to do say that the user created okay so we'll just i'll just copy this instead of writing, instead of writing it all over again so i'll copy this paste it and then get this now what we're going to have to use is an if statement an if else statement so if okay if that one is equals to one and that two all right is equals to one so this means the user actually did really sneak eye they were going to say finally sneak eye rolled if the english is correct Okay, or we'll just say finally finally you wrote okay so we're going to put how many how long how, how many rows number of rows okay times to get a snake eye all right so if the user didn't get a snake eye the next thing we're going to want to say is I'm going to say no snake eye road okay so let me explain this what this does is it actually checks if that one is equals to one and it is equals to two so if this is equals to one and one that means you've actually rolled the snake eye Okay, that means this loop did um, execute successfully, but if it didn't roll a snake eye, I've just seen no snake eye roll. Okay, so let's test this, and um, it might get a little bit boring because I might have to roll so many times. All right, uh, so it says snake eye dice game. So I enter R to roll. I wrote six and five, um, three and five, four and five, one and four, one and five. 4 and 5, 1 and 3, 1 and 5, 1 and 5, 4 and 1, 1 and 2, 6 and 5, 3 and 2, 5 and 2, 1 and 4, 2 and 5, 2 and 4, 5 and 2, 6 and 5, 5 and 6, 6 and 2, 5 and 6, 2 and 6, 1 and 6, 1 and 1. So finally, uh, I had to roll 25 times to get a snake eye. Okay, now uh, let's check the break. So if um, say I've been rolling to, for too long okay so I've been rolling for too long I say press or zero to quit I just enter zero and I say no snake I rolled okay so guys now this is the end of um, the tutorial video another thing you could do to improve this is you could give it a time okay so you could allocate the time to it how long did the user actually take until he was able to roll a snake die a snake eye all right so thank you guys for watching please do come back and watch some more and do your do continue your hands on and God bless you.